All right, right now I'm just heating up my etching solution. You want to heat it up to between 160 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And you need to use a double boiler. So you have a plastic Tupperware with the etching solution inside a pot of water. And then you can stick a thermometer in the water. Do not stick it in the multi-etch unless it's uh, acid resistant. So uh, that's boiling. And you need to make sure it goes in a plastic container like a Rubbermaid Tupperware. These are probably the best. And do not put it in glass and do not put it in a steel pot. The only thing you can use is plastic. And you need to keep your exhaust fan on because it does emit fumes and you do not want to be breathing it. If you do this outside on a hot plate, it's highly recommended. And to check the actual temperature of the etching solution, you use an infrared thermometer. As you can see, it's only 107 degrees, even though the water underneath it is 180. That's because I just poured the multi-etch and it's slowly heating up. So I've got my titanium standoffs cleaned, degreased in the ultrasonic cleaner, and they are sitting on a titanium wire inside distilled water, waiting to be etched. Now you'll want to wear a face mask and safety glasses to avoid spilling some multi-etch in your eyes and your mask will help absorb some of the fumes that you may be breathing if it has a charcoal layer just make sure you pick up a uh, dust mask that is suitable for organic paint fumes you can get those at Walmart I believe alright looks like we're almost there once it gets up to 160, I'll go ahead and start etching. And if you have a hard time getting it to heat up to the proper temperature, what I did was put the cover over it because it seemed to heat up to 150 degrees and it wouldn't go any higher. So I put the lid on it and it did go to 165. And another way to know when your multi-etch is to the right temperature is by looking at the bubbles. Once it starts bubbling, it's about 160 degrees. So there's a good... Uh, way to tell. Double check. Use your thermometer. 160. And after I took it out the multi-edge, I have a distilled water right here. Quick rinse. Then I have some more distilled water over here. And that is what it looks like after etching. I do not see a difference. So this is going to go straight into and the anodiz anodizing tank with distilled water and TSP, trisodium phosphate. And there's the standoffs with a large titanium sheet on the other side. That's the side that is going to get the negative and then the standoffs will get the positive charge. Alright, I'm going to separate these to ensure even coverage on each standoff. We've got the negative connected to the large titanium plate, which is going to be my cathode, and then the positive connected to the titanium wire, the anode. I'm going to go ahead and slowly ramp this up. I'm at zero volts right now. One volt. Three volts. See it start to bubble now. Five volts. Eight volts. We're at nine volts now which would equal one 9 volt battery if you're doing this at home on a battery it's 
10 volts. Well, bolts. See the titanium wire starting to change colors. Looks like a bronze. See that cathode is also bubbling. It's emitting hydrogen gas. Now you can capture that gas in a cup. All you have to do is place a Tupperware over the top of this and the hydrogen gas rises to the top and it will press the oxygen outward or downward and then you can take a match or a lighter and put it under that cup and you'll hear a loud pop look at the wire starting to turn blue got a bronze in the middle and the wire is turning blue but my standoffs are still silver Well, it turns out that these standoffs are not titanium because they do not anodize. I tried for over an hour with no luck, so I'm going to go ahead and do the pocket clip because I know that is titanium. Slowly raise the voltage. Eight volts, nine volts. 10 volts, 11, 12, 13, 13, it's like a bronze, slight bronze color, 14, 15, 16, right now I've got a purple color at 19 volts. Let's see if we can find a blue color. 24 volts. Five volts. All right, I'm done with the pocket clip. That is at exactly 28.0 volts. This is a blue. This is blue. Yep, it's blue. I was trying to get a darker blue, but I went past it. A darker blue would be at 26 volts. And once you get to 28, it turns blue. And then once you get to around 30, it'll be a light blue. So I'll try this out. If I need to uh, change the color, all I have to do is uh, use the multi-etch and it will remove the anodizing. I can redo it. That's what it looks like off the hinder it came off of. Now I have to do the filler tab next. I've got the filler tab in there. And I've got 24 volts and I'm going to go ahead and touch it. To watch it change color. and try to get a real nice dark blue. Alright, see the filler tab is a little bit darker. The clip is a little bit of lighter blue. The fill tab was done at 26.2 volts and the clip at 28.0 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and etch the clip again and get it to match. Alright, I just etched the pocket clip and that's what it looks like. It removes the anodizing completely. Alright, I'm going to redo the clip got 25 volts. I'm going to clip it on there. See it turn real quick. Already a nice purple. 25.2 volts and I'm going to slowly raise it to 26.2 to in 
increase the oxide layer thickness slightly. Alright, now they're both done at 26.2 volts. Got a matching set. They're the exact same color. Nice dark blue. That will be it for this anodizing video. I will see you guys later. Well, too bad I couldn't anodize the standoffs because it would look really nice. That dark blue looks a lot better than the light blue. Stands out better.